Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number four from exercise 1D from the Pure Mathematics P1 textbook from International A Level. It's an Excel book. This is chapter one, algebraic expressions. A student has asked me to answer question four and five, which I'll do so in this video. Now, question number four, part A. I think he didn't want me to do this. He already knows this, but I'll just go through the whole question and. Um, I think his problem was part B. I'll just go through the whole thing just to be complete. So it says, find the value of 81 to the power of a quarter. Now, we learned one of the rules of indices is that when you have something raised to the power of 1 over n, that's the, basically the nth root of that thing. Okay, and if it was to the power of m over n, then it would be the nth root of a to the power of m. Okay, so the power, uh, the power here is the numerator of the index, in the index, um, in the fractional index, and the root is the denominator of the fractional index. So here, the, what this means basically is the fourth root of 81, which is equal to three, because three times three times three times three, um, three times three times three times three, yes, that is 81. Okay, so there's part A, pretty simple. And part B says simplify x times, x times, two x to the power of negative a third, raised to the power of 4. Well, here we have to deal with bid mass. We have to deal with the, the index first before the multiplication. This is x times this, but I have to first raise this to the power of 4. Um, so I'm going to have x times, and I'm going to keep this in a bracket for now. Now, this is 2 to the power of 4. This is 2 to the power of 4 times. And you can have x to the power of minus a third raised to the power of 4. Okay, so... 2 to the power of 4 and x to minus 1 third raised to the power of 4. So 2 to the power of 4 is going to give you 16. So this is going to be x times 16. And this is x to the power of when you raise something from a power to another power. So a to the power of m to the power of n gives you a to the power of m times n. So you multiply the power. So you have 16x to the power of negative 4 over 3. And now I have to multiply these two together. So I'm going to have this basically 1 times 16, which is 16. And the x is, this is x to the power of 1. So I have to add the power. So it's 1 plus minus 4 over 3. So it's like 1 minus 4 over 3. So you end up with 16x. And this is like 3 over 3 minus 4 over 3, which is minus 1 third. 16x to the power of 1 third, uh, minus 1 third, sorry. And there's your answer. You can leave your answer like that if you wish. Or you could write it as 16 over x to the power of a third. That's perfectly fine. Or if you want, you can say 16 over the cube root of x. That's also fine. All of these are perfectly correct answers for this question to simplify that. All right. So there's three different ways you can express your answer for, for part B. Now for number five, it says, given that y equals 1 eighth x cubed, express each of the following in the form kx to the power of n, where k and n are constants. So first of all, basically what we have to do is express everything in terms of x. So I've got to get rid of the y. So for part a, y to the power of a third would be equal to, just replace the y with 1 over 8x cubed, that's all. You want to have it in, in terms of x at the end, you've got to get rid of the y by replacing it by what y is equal to in terms of x. So instead of y, I'm going to put 1 over 8x cubed, and that has to be raised to the power of one third. Okay, so to simplify that, basically the numbers I'm going to take it separately. So this is basically one over eight to the power of a third multiplied by x to the power of three to the power of a third. When it comes to numbers, I like to deal with them in terms of roots and powers. So this is like the cube root of one over eight. And when it comes to algebraic terms, I like to think of this in terms of multiplying the powers makes it easier. So 3 times 1 third is 1. So you end up with basically the cube root of 1 eighth is a half uh, x, 1 half x. So you can say that this is the value, this is what y to the power of 1 third is in terms of k x to the power of n. Okay, where k, k here in this case, k would be a half and x would be 1. You don't have to write it there, but x would be 1. So there's your answer for part A. For part B, very similarly, we have to do the same thing. But what I'm, yeah, so you're going to have a half and you're going to have y. Instead of y, I'm going to write 1 over x, 1 over 8x cubed. And this is raised to the power of negative 2. All of this is raised to the power of negative 2. 
So again, I've got to deal with the powers first. So um, what I can do here, what I can do here to make life easier, I'm going to write this as x cubed over 8 to the power of negative 2, which is a half times, and this will be 8 over x cubed to the power of 2. The negative power means reciprocal, just to make life a bit easier um, to deal with. And now I can... I can't use the half yet because I have to deal with the power still. This is going to be 8 squared over x cubed squared. Okay, so it's a half times. And this is going to be 8 squared is 64 over now x cubed to the power of 2 is going to be x to the power of 6. All right, the 2 will cancel with the 64, leaving you with 32. So you're left with 32 over x to the power of 6. As I said, we can also write this as 32x to the power of negative 6. Write this as negative power in the numerator. So both of these answers are perfectly fine. And there we have the answer to this question, part B. So it's simply a case of replacing, in this question, the x with um, the, the, the y, sorry, in here, with 1 over 8x cubed, Okay, which is the same as x cubed over 8. And you can continue on as shown. Right, so it's just using the laws of indices to simplify these questions in the manner required. So there's the answer to these two questions, question number four and five from exercise 1D. Um, other questions you might want to watch from this particular chapter um, of the textbook can be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere over here. If there's a question that you don't find in the playlist you want me to answer, you're welcome to request that. Other questions from this um, particular topic of algebraic expressions can be found from P1, can be found in the playlist in this area over here. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Thank you for watching and see you soon.